The incident. An incident that occurred in the Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina earlier this month is at least a curious coincidence, or it may possibly even represent the assassination and suppression of another highly important energy from the vacuum invention. The victim's name was De Gus was found slumped in his car in the long-term parking area of the airport, totally unresponsive. He was rushed to the hospital and was pronounced dead very quickly. The resulting autopsy indicated heart failure, and thus concluded death from natural causes. The police did not investigate it any further, and they are not considering it as a possible homicide. The importance of the de Gus invention. De Gus was in fact the inventor of a thin wafer-like material that somehow specially aligned the atoms or electron currents ongoing in that material so that the wafer produced a constant amperage at a small voltage continuous real power. In other words, a strange kind of self-powering battery. It is actually powered by the ongoing and continuous tremendous exchange of energy by the active vacuum with the charges of any material. This exchange is exceptionally powerful, and normally our electromagnetic systems and devices only use just a tiny bit of it. As an example of the importance of this probably now lost, free energy from the vacuum, invention consider an electric car. Electric car with de Gus wafer, battery pack, taking all their energy output continually from the vacuum. The electric car is now using a permanent, self-powering battery. One can achieve the dream of a self-powering electric auto, taking all its input energy cleanly from the active vacuum environment itself, without the need of burning physical fuel. In short, a car also without harmful emissions that damage and pollute the biosphere and contribute to global warming. De Gus battery, together with an alternator, would also produce a self-powering unit capable of powering the average home with AC power. The assassination. So a question arises as to whether this was just a simple, accidental, heart attack or whether it could have been a very professional assassination to suppress the inventor and his invention. While we cannot definitively answer that question, we can explain exactly how such an assassination could have been done, which would have given the victim a massive heart attack or stroke or both, resulting in his death. The standard method of assassination to provide a certified autopsy report of death by natural causes is the little M-beam, shooter, using the Venus ECCM technique means warping of its wavefront to destroy the body's control of its heartbeat. There are two basic sizes. One is about the size of a pocketbook, and has an effective range of something like 30 feet or so. The other is the size of a bazooka and its beam is effective at a range of about 200 feet or so. It also is often used with infrared sighting to fire through a wall at a person, say, in a room on the second floor, by aiming at his infrared change and signature detected outside the building. A person struck by this Venus Technique warped wavefront beam has a sudden interruption of all control of his heartbeat, and so his heart goes into instant, uncontrolled, and violent fibrillation. Exposure to the main beam for 10 seconds or more is almost certain to result in death of the individual by a resulting massive heart failure, stroke, or both. My colleague Ken Moore and I were struck with just such a beam from a small Venus beam shooter in the inside breast coat pocket of the assassin in a restaurant here in Huntsville several years ago. We both felt the beam and the instant fibrillation. I personally saw the assassin about 20 feet away from us and well dressed in suit and tie, pull back his coat front and point the book-sized shooter at us. Fortunately, we were seated right beside the emergency exit from the dining room, and I knew about Venus Technique shooters and their drastic effects. So we just immediately jumped right through that exit, setting off all the alarms, but getting out of the beam in just a few seconds. So we lived to tell the tale. If this were indeed used in the de Gus death case, 
It would have been very simple for the assassin to simply approach him while he was still sitting in his just parked car, hit him with the beam and hold it on him for say, 30 seconds to a minute, then close his coat and simply walk away.